Welcome to the first video in the Scene Setup video series, The Camera. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the camera frame. But before we begin, let's take a look at what we have here in the scene. So this is the dojo that we created quite a few tutorials ago, and I just finished it by cleaning it up and coloring it. So let's look at the different layers that we have. So on the first layer, we have the punching bag. So it sort of acts as an overlay. The second layer, we have the dojo. The third layer, we have the door. The fourth, the balcony. Um, and then the mountains might better be viewed in the drawing drawing view. So we have the, the first set of mountains, the second set, the third set, and then we have the sky, which is just a, a blue-white gradient. Um, and you'll see why I set those all up on different layers um, as we go through the tutorial. So the first thing I'd like to show you is how to add a camera to your scene. And you can do this in several ways. If you go to the timeline, just click on this plus sign here and from the drop down menu select camera which is the first menu item. And then if you scroll to the bottom of your timeline stack you'll see that there's a camera at the bottom. Um, other ways that you can add a camera is going to the top menu and selecting insert camera. Um, but any other camera you add you won't see in your timeline. However, if you go to your network view, you'll see that you have multiple cameras. So that second camera was added, um, but you won't see it in the timeline, um, which leads me to show you the next way you can add a camera, and that's through the module library. And of course, that's only for Animate Pro users because you don't have a network in Animate. So you can find it under um, your favorites, uh, under Move, there's the camera there as well, and under All Modules. So all you have to do is click on it and then drag it and drop it in the network view. Um, and you don't need to connect it to the composite or anything like that for now. Uh, you could just drag and drop it. It doesn't have to be connected to anything. So I'm just going to delete those two. Um, for Animate users, just to let you know, you cannot put a camera in a symbol. And if you try, you'll get an error message telling you that that's not possible. And if you want to animate your camera, which is a distinct possibility, you have to add a peg to it uh, so that you can put those transformations and translations so you can key them um, for your camera. But we'll get into that later. So we're going to delete the camera peg. And this gray frame that has always surrounded your um, drawing elements, so this frame right here, can now be selected either in the camera view by selecting it with the transform tool and you can see that it's highlighted in pink or in the timeline view by selecting the camera layer so once again it's highlighted in pink and this might indicate to you that now you can perform transformations and rotations on this camera to set it up in the position that you would like and you can do this by using the tools in the advanced animation toolbar so let's get our toolbar by going to windows toolbars, advanced animation. These functions also exist under the animation menu in the top uh, menu bar of the software. So now that my camera is selected, I can use either the transformation tool to move it, or the rotation tool as well to rotate it. And you can see when you use the rotation tool that the pivot here is, is present in the center, and that'll be your default. Um, and if I just undo those two moves, I just want to show you that if you go into render mode, so I think most of you are aware of this, but that outline that you see is what crops what you'll see in your final render um, through your camera view. So none of this stuff that's sort of sticking out will be seen. It's just whatever is in this gray box. So there's another way to set up your camera frame, and that's to its layer properties. So if you double click on the camera, you can bring up its layer properties and let's look at some of these. So you can enable or disable the camera so now you can see that even though you see this gray bar it's not uh, this gray frame it's not the actual camera frame and you can see that, that it's being disabled and enabled in both the network view and in the timeline view because the check mark goes on and off. Once you've decided on your default camera position you can always lock it so that it can't be animated or moved. Um, you can also use this to turn on the onion skin for both the camera and the drawing view. And if you notice, these blue bars came out 
uh, beside the red playhead in the timeline and that shows you how many frames previous and next that you'll be able to see so you can always slide that and change the number of frames you'd like to see. Um, so I'm going to turn that off though. Um, here you can change the name of the camera so once we get into several cameras it might be a good idea to change the name to camera 1, camera 2 or something more indicative of what that camera is supposed to be doing. Um, here is where we can set up those positions that we saw so you can change um, the x axis, the x value, the y value, so x being left to right, y being up and down, z being backwards and forwards, so you can do all of that. You can change the angle, which of course is the rotation. You can change where the pivot point is, so right now we see it in exactly in the center. But when we do this, our pivot's actually being moved. You can also change the uh, field of view. So right now the field of view is grayed out and you can't actually change it, but if you select override scenes field of view, you have the ability to also play with that. And then you can always set it back to its default. And you can use this function here for when you want to animate the camera zoom, and we'll get into that later as well. So I'm just going to close this. And now we have all these sort of messed up uh, values for our you know, rotation pivot, um, the position of our camera frame. So if we want to reset everything, we can do it all at once. Um, because I only have the rotation tool selected, when I do this, only the rotation will reset. So to reset the rotation, you can go to Animation, Reset. And of course, the keyboard shortcut is listed right beside. And you see that it's reset the rotation. However, um, you know the pivot is still here. There's other things that haven't been changed. So if you then select the transformation tool and then do the same thing and go to animation reset, or you can also do reset all, you'll see now everything has been fully reset. So the last thing I'd like to show you is the camera list. And right now we only have a one camera, I believe, yeah, here. So let me drop one more in just to make this example. Uh, valuable. So then if we go to the top um, menu and we select scene, you can select your choice of camera. So right now we're seeing through camera one, but we can also see through camera two if we want. Obviously there's no difference. Um, you did see that in the timeline it switched. And if you actually had changed the values for these two cameras separately, you can see that you can toggle back and forth. And this is useful to have two cameras for many different reasons, um, one being that if you're still setting up your scene and you want to see what it looks like from a, maybe two different angles, a high perspective, a low, uh, you know, off to the side, you can set up your scene through the two, two different cameras and see which angle you like better. So that's it for the tutorial camera. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, positioning the scene components.